You know, I've noticed something that I've observed over many years looking at my favorite guitar players, and it's that they like to play guitar in a way that reflects their personality. Now, what I mean by that is they play guitar in a way that kind of reflects the quirks that they have. So it adds this extra layer of creativity to the way that they play. And of course, to me, the end result is a form of musical expression that's just contagious. I love seeing that. And I love seeing guitar players play in a way that reflects their personalities. Or in even other situations, or if you're a particular guitar player or no guitar player that might be really shy in person, but when they're on guitar, they just let her rip. Either way, all that stuff inspired this lesson where I'm gonna show you ways that you can add a little bit of extra personality to the way you play your guitar solos. So what I'm going to do now is teach you that series of licks I just played over the backing track to give your soloing personality a little boost. So starting with lick number one, this uses a technique called unison bends, which in my opinion have a lot of personality. So we're going to start off with our first finger on the fifth fret of the B string, and we're going to have our third finger on the um, seventh fret of the G string. So we're, we have these two notes here, and we're going to play them at the same time, but we're not going to play them just as is, like this, because that sounds terrible. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is called the unison bend, right? So we're actually going to be bending a note to unify with, for lack of a better word, with the other note that we're playing. So this note right here, the, the uh, fifth fret on the B string, that note is the note that we're going to be bending to on the G string. And what this is going to do is create this kind of tension between the frequencies as we kind of work our way up in pitch to that, to matching up with that note. And it'll sound something like this. And notice how when I make the bend, it sounds like grimy in a cool way, right? Until I finally reach the pitch and then it kind of evens out, right? Like. Right now, if I did that and then I just let up a little bit, you'd hear the difference. Right, so it's a kind of a way to use the, that clashing of different frequencies to your advantage, which is kind of where the personality comes in. Like I said, it adds this kind of grittiness, this really cool uh, kind of drag to it, you know? Especially when you do it on the slow side. Now, I played this a little fast, and I'll tell you, it was just like this. It's kind of like one motion. But of course, you, you know, I leave it, I, I defer to you to uh, do it however you want stylistically, because again, this is about your personality, not exactly mine. I'm just trying to give you something to start off with, right? So what we're doing, like I said, first finger on the fifth fret of the B string, that's going to stay put. Third finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the G string, and we're going to bend a whole step. So we're bending from this note to this note, which is also this note right here, right? So that's our target note. And here's the thing, kind of a trick to making these a lot easier for yourself is to also recruit the efforts of your second finger here. So it's like you're using two fingers to bend instead of just one. Because just like that can be kind of tough unless you're using super light gauge string. Personally, I like to just, it's just a good habit to have. I like to use two fingers, so it's like, you know, two for the price of one. And they're a lot stronger that way, right? You double the strength of, of your bending finger. So we do that, right? Starting from the fifth fret, between the fifth fret and the seventh fret here on the B and the G string. Then we're gonna do the same thing. We just shift the shape up two frets between the seventh fret and the ninth fret. Same strings and everything. So seventh fret on B string, ninth fret on G string. Right, we're doing another whole step bend. So we did, right? And then we move that same shape up one fret we do the same thing, right? So just to make it even easier, so just notice how we're doing the same, using the same shape with your first and third fingers on the B and G strings. Right, so we just walked it up between the fifth and seventh fret, seventh and uh, ninth fret, and then eighth and 10th frets there, right? Then we're just gonna walk it back. We're gonna go back to seven and nine, and then back to five and seven. And with five and seven, you can just kind of hold it if you want to. Or if you want to be really cool, you can do this. Where you let up a little bit, kind of let that grind come back and then just bring it on back home, right? So the whole lick goes like this. Now, 
Now, a little trick with unison bends is while it's important, you want to aim for that target note. If you're not perfect with it, that little bit of, you know, like grime that come, I don't even know what to call it, but it's just like that cool sound when the frequencies clash, you know? <laughs> It sounds cool. So if you're not perfect with it, at least you're getting that cool effect, right? You at least don't want to be way too flat or way too sharp to where you kind of loses the vibe, right? So don't worry so much about being perfect if you can't quite get there, but you know, try to get as close as you can to it. And that was lick number one. Lick number two uses a technique that's loaded with personality called ghost bending, which is essentially bending the string before we actually pick it, right? So what we're doing is with our third finger, we're doing a whole step bend, but before we actually pick the string, right? So this is kind of where you want to guess as far as where the pitch is, but bear with me. You'll see how this is, this is almost more of an effect than it is about you know, being super accurate with the note itself, right? So we're bending, if, if we think about a whole step bend, right? So from this note to this note. So that's if we're picking the note. Now we wanna just kinda guess, just gauge, feel it out, right? So wherever you start, we're gonna do that bend first and then we're gonna pick the string. And we're just gonna do a slight release on the bend so it sounds kinda like a moan, right? And I like to upstroke this because just that extra little scrapiness you get from the pick just gives it some more, even more personality, right? Right, we're gonna do this six times. So we do the bend, the ghost bend, and then we pick it six times, and with each time, we just let up a little bit on the, on the, on the bend and then bring it back. So it's like this. Right, so six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a little faster, right? We're doing... That's the entirety of lick number two. So we're starting off with that ghost bend. Remember six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then right once we've reached that sixth one, we're gonna hit the fifth fret on the G string with our first finger and give it kind of a slow blues bend, right? So a slow quarter step bend, all right? So a quarter step bend, is it's not a half step bend where you're gonna obviously hear that note, right? A, 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 fret, a fret up in pitch, that would be a half step. We're not bending that far, but it's like, I like to think of a quarter step bend is think of a bend as soon as it registers as a bend. As soon as you notice that pitch moving, then stop it, right? All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We do those six ghost bends, uh, you know, that we pick the string on. And then that one, you know, uh, when we're on the fifth fret, we sustain the note and then do it kind of a slow sweeping uh, quarter step bend. Right, all those little things, it's really the subtleties that add personality and spice to your solos, right? Then we're gonna slide up from, let, you can just slide from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the D string there, right? And then we're gonna play the fifth fret on the D string and then hold it there, give it some vibrato. Right, so all the little things happening here, the ghost bends, the slow quarter step bend, the slide, and then ending it right there, and you know, that's not the root note, right? We're playing in the key of A, right? So we're on a flat seven, which gives it kind of a dominant sound. Now, not to go too theory with it, right? But just like, you know, it's just a way to take advantage of certain notes that just add color to what you're doing. Okay, so a quick recap on lick number two. Now let's move on to lick number three. Lick number three is really cool because we're gonna be playing two strings at once while one of the strings remaining open and droning the whole time. And it gives it a really cool kind of effect. This is something that, you know, I, I hear guitar players like Mike Campbell do all the time. Of course, there are tons of guitar, Eddie Van Halen does this. I mean, tons of guitar players do this, but you'll see what I mean here in a second. So we're gonna start with our first finger on the eighth fret of the B string. But when we play it, we're also gonna play the open high E string. Right, which has that kind of griminess to it, right? Those clashing frequencies, but we're gonna use it to our advantage to add some personality. So we play that twice. Then we're gonna, with our third finger, play the 10th fret of the B string, but we gotta keep that open high E string just wide open. So we have, right? And then we do it again. So we do that two times. Then we're gonna walk up. We're gonna walk up with our third finger to the 12th fret of the B string. Remember, every time we play a note on the B string, we're playing the open high E string. All right, then up to the 13th fret, back to the 12th fret, 
and then back to the 10th fret to resolve it. So the lick, uh, the entire lick sounds like this. Now that's the rhythm that I choose to play those notes, right? Because that's just kind of what feels right over the backing track. But of course, you can look at this as kind of a blank slate. If you want to do something like this, like. You know, you can do that, right? It doesn't have to be confined to a specific rhythm. Again, this is all meant to just give you something to start you off, right, as a jumping off point, so that once you kind of glean from the, the different things that give these licks their personality, then you can think to yourself, okay, now let me see how I can add my personality into what I already know. So one more time with lick number three. Now let's move on to lick number four. Lick number four is my personal favorite of the bunch. It goes like this. So this fourth lick uses vibrato and lots of it, right? So what we're doing is we're just walking down a scale on one string on, on, the, uh, on the G string, right? Starting on the 14th fret of the G string. And I like to use my first finger for this. So with every time we, we pick a note going down this scale on that string, we're gonna give it a, like a kind of a quick shape, right? So not like this or like this, just kind of in the middle, right? This is another thing with you know vibrato being a very expressive technique. You wanna have control, right? So if you find yourself being too slow or too, you know more, more likely it's too fast, that's what I notice a lot of guitar players kind of have one speed with vibrato and it's this kind of nervous, fast, you know? which has a place, don't get me wrong, it definitely has a place, but if that's your only speed, you know, you wanna be able to control it. So almost pretend like you're slowing yourself down, like you're going into slight slow motion, right? Just to help you gain control of the movement, right? Cause you wanna be able to vibrato at whatever speed you want, right? So we start with, like I said, 14th fret on the G string. We play that, give that a little shake, move it down to the 12th fret, same thing, all right? Then down to the 11th fret, same thing down to the ninth fret, same thing, all right? And then finally the seventh fret, same thing. All right, so like I said, we're walking down a scale on one string. All right, and then we conclude it with this. We're gonna do a slow half step bend and release from the ninth fret of the D string. All right, so it's like going like this, playing those two notes there, right? Ninth fret, to 10th fret and back but we're bending it, so we're going, right? And then finally, we're gonna land on the root note this time, right? This is a good conclusion lick, right? We're playing the seventh fret of the D string. Hit that twice and give it some vibrato. So the whole lick, now just to demonstrate how important the vibrato technique is to giving this lick personality. I'm gonna play the exact same lick, but don't, don't use any vibrato, and you'll see that it'll just sound totally bland in comparison. Check it out. Yeah, it's just not doing it for me. Much better, right? So little things like that, I'm telling you, it's the little things that give soloing its personality and, and feel, you could say, right? So it's not this crazy lofty, like something that you're gonna have to wait, you know, 10 years of, of practicing or whatever to achieve, right? It's something you can do right now with just little changes. And again, this is about getting you started, giving you something to, to work off of so that you can eventually start adding your own personality. Because at the end of the day, with my lessons, I'm not trying to turn you into a clone of me, right? I'm trying to turn you into you. If you haven't really discovered who you are as a guitar player yet, I just wanna help facilitate and get you there, right? And encourage you to experiment and trust your instincts, right? May not be right 100% of the time, but everything is worth trying and experimenting. And then by doing that, you're able to use process of elimination and decide what works, what doesn't work, what feels like you, what doesn't feel like you. And you go through that process and that's ultimately, in my opinion, what makes you a real guitar player. So what I'm gonna do now is play all four of those licks again in whatever order I want over the backing track. I might play some, you know, a couple times, you know, we'll just kind of see how it feels just to show you how you can apply these pretty much anywhere you want.
me tell you exactly what I did there. I had the licks in my head and I let the track play and I just felt my way through it. So some licks I played, I repeated them. I didn't really stick to any particular order. I even changed the rhythm a little bit in some places just to show you that it's fair game with experimenting, you know, try out different things. So when you put in this time and you start to collect all this data, right, on like what works, what doesn't work and when it doesn't work and all this kind of stuff, the next time you, you put on that track and you practice these licks, it's going to be more deliberate, more on purpose and therefore have a lot more personality in them. So now that I've thrust the door open for you to start adding personality and spice to your guitar solos so you can really start expressing yourself through your instrument, I want to give you something that's going to take that to infinity and beyond. So we went over the key of A today, but imagine being able to play this stuff over any musical key, even the weird ones. That's why I'm giving you a free guitar cheat sheet. It's going to show you how to instantly solo in any key. You're going to learn really quickly how to be able to take exactly what you learned today and apply it to any musical key imaginable. It's amazing. So be sure to click here to grab that cheat sheet or check the link in the description box. And if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our other relevant lessons right over here. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.